Hello everybody. It's Libby with Gemini Homestead. I uh, thought about it right before I started making my mama's roux and I said, wait a minute. I got the weekly uh, treasure box recipes that I've got to do. So I figured, well, I'm two days early on it, but I'm also going down to the Bayou Bash at the end of the week. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the recipe today because I was making it already. So what I'm gonna make is a quart jar full of roux. And all that basically is, is flour and oil. And I'm gonna get everything set up. I'm gonna bring you back, show you how I do mine. And for the ones out there that don't know anything about roux, basically it's just a coloring agent and a thickening agent for gravy, stews, gumbos, uh, etouffees, you can basically use use it for a whole lot of lot of things. But it's mainly just a thickener and it also has a flavor base to it. But I'll get everything going and I'll set the camera down so you can watch how I make it. So I'll be right back. We're at the stove. Now this is gonna be a little different maybe than what some of you are used to. You know, if you wanna make just a little roux, you add your oil and flour to your skillet. Slowly stir it, because if you ever scorch it, it's no good. Well, because I'm making a quart jar full, mine's gonna cook in the oven. So the first thing you wanna do is set your oven on 400 degrees. Get it preheated. I've got a gravy whisk. This is my favorite whisk. It's actually called a French whisk. I call it my gravy whisk. This is also a dough whisk. And if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, Scotland, I believe. I love this. I, I absolutely love this dough whisk. But it works good on roux. Okay, so our oven's preheated at 400. We're gonna get our skillet heated on a low setting, not extremely, like my settings one, two, two, six, which is high. I'm gonna set mine about a three, which is pretty hot. You're not trying to really get your skillet hot. You're just trying to get it warm. That's it. So it won't take but a second for this to lightly warm up. And I have two cups of vegetable oil this time. You can use lard. I just don't have enough today, so I'm using just plain old vegetable oil, but it's two cups. Now I'm gonna pour these two cups of vegetable oil in this iron skillet. And as soon as that oil gets warm, in other words, you can take your hand and lightly cover that oil with it, just kind of fan your hand, you'll feel that little bit of heat. Now you're not trying to burn your hand, but you'll be able to feel that, oh, that, that oil is warm. That's when we're gonna pour four cups of all-purpose flour. Now once we get this all-purpose flour in here, and we get it well blended, this baby's going in the oven because I got too much going on. And as long as you stir about every 10 minutes, you're gonna be good. And this is where it depends on your choice. I choose a dark roux. Now, sometimes if I happen to have plenty of AP flour, which is what I call all purpose, I have it in a five gallon uh, food storage container. I'll make a blonde roux, which is light. I'll make a, a caramel roux, which is a medium or a dark. Today, I need between a medium and a dark roux. That way, I can pretty well use it for anything I want. The blonde roux is more for your, um, well, I don't know what some people do. I do the blonde roux for like my crawfish etouffees, my shrimp stews, things that you don't want to overpower the flavor with roux. You want to, if you're using crawfish, you want to taste crawfish. If you're using shrimp, you want to taste the shrimp. So if I was to put a dark roux and say those two things, then it would take over the seafood flavor. The same as chicken. I use a blonde roux and this, uh, I don't know an English word, we call it fricasse. All it is is chicken and gravy. That would be a blonde roux. 
Um, it's also called to some people chicken greasy gravy, which is English for the freak I say. And it's strictly just a light roux and your trinity, your onions, your celery, and your bell peppers. Um, but as we do these weekly uh, meals that I'm going to do out of Mom's Treasure Box, I'll bring y'all into that because some of you may want to know how to make all of these things. But anyhow, today we're on a medium to dark roux. So as soon as that oil, where I can feel it, I'll bring you back and we'll go to the next step and then it's pretty well done. This takes about 30 minutes, but you're not doing anything but basically blending it in and letting the oven do the work for you. So we'll come back when this gets warm, because remember it's two cups, so it's gonna take a little bit on a low heat, because you're not trying to scorch that, that oil, you know? So we'll come back in a little bit, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I think we're right where we need to be. As soon as I take my hand here, I feel a little bit of warmth, and that's all you're wanting. But now here's the key. Don't go be dumping four cups of uh, flour up in here, you talk about a mess. So that's the hardest part of this roux is getting four cups of flour in here without wearing it. I'm probably going to be wearing it, but I'm just trying to pre-warn y'all. Y'all look back there, you see what I'm going to be working on? I don't know if the camera can see it. I got a watermelon. Got it from the man up at the corner. That's what I'll be working on. I love watermelon. All right, I'm going to take this bread with because I like the way it pulls that oil down. Because, you know, it's kind of like a spoon. Even though it's holy, if I would take that little whisk, it would cause too much air into the flour. I promise you. So y'all could easily take a spoon at this point and just ease it out. I'm just saying, don't be dumping it. You talk about a mess. I know too well. I am the lady of messes. Ask Buddy. Oh, and the ones that saw our video yesterday, y'all know I didn't work him like a mule like he tried to say. I promise. But that's a good man. Lord sure has blessed me with him. I tell you, we have the best time every day the Lord gives us to wake up to be in each other's lives and company and of course I think he keeps us alive because I think he enjoys the entertainment. But anyhow, all right, y'all see how I'm just kind of blending this in and I start, you can kind of hear it want to bubble. That's when I'm going to turn that stove off because you can hear it wanting to bubble. Now watch this. After I get this flour kind of broke down in here so it ain't puffing on me, I'm going to take that French whisk, and I'm going to go to town. I'm going to get it all incorporated. Y'all will never make roux again. Well, I mean, you'll have to make some sometimes if you're cooking a meal. See, I just flattered that. I told y'all. Um, but to me, this is the way to go. And you just keep it in your, uh, what's that thing? The refrigerator. See, I almost said it's an ice box. And you just keep it in there and pull out what you want. Now make sure you're using a clean spoon when you pull it out. And you're going to see the roof settle now in the ice box over time and the oil's going to come to the top and that's what you want because that's what uh, protects that roof. See? Okay, I'm almost got it going in here. I'm not sure my camera's got it where y'all can see it, but what I'll do is when I get in here and edit, I'll try to bring it in some so y'all can see more of this. But it's almost incorporated, because what, what I mean by that is I don't see any loose oil. You know, I don't want any loose oil. You want just kind of a, I don't know, uh, looks, like, looks like cornmeal batter coming together, and that's what you want. Okay. And what I'll do is, now when I'm stirring it every 10 minutes in the oven, I'm gonna stir it with this, uh, the bread whisk. Okay, it's going in the oven, 400 degrees. And in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna give it a good stir. 
and you're just going to do this to your liking. So I'm thinking 30 minutes because I'm trying to go that medium to dark color rook. So I'm not going to you know, keep bringing y'all back, watching me stir. I'll go ahead and stir, say, one time. I'll show y'all the next 10 minutes of uh, me stirring it. It's probably not going to change much colors. If I don't see a big difference, I won't bring you back until I start seeing a difference. And so we'll go from that stage, which would be maybe one that you'd want to keep, and then I'll bring you back when I get it to the color that I want, and then jarring it up. So I'm going to cut the watermelon while I'm waiting on this thing to do what it's supposed to do. And I'll bring you back. While we're waiting, I thought I'd show y'all a little trick on this watermelon. I've already done one. I thought, why don't I just go ahead and include this as well? I took this, and this is a seeded melon. I just took it, cut it in half. I've already done the other half. And I took my blade, my knife, and what I did was, I just went around the complete circle of the melon. And then I made two cut marks down the middle. And then I came back across for the size slices that I wanted. And the reason why I like to do a melon like this, since it's not a small one, it's a large one, is because all the stuff, the juice and the, the loose seeds and all, is not on the counter. Everything stays in the cavity. And then from that point, I could turn this into my watermelon rind preserve. It just makes cleanup easier. You can do all sorts of things with it because I've not cut into, you know, just cutting big pieces. So here's the first two pieces out of this one. So I figured I'd just show y'all. I've got my cut marks here, and I'm just going to come in with this, lift up, and there you go. It... I don't know. I just like it better because, it, like I said, I don't have a mess. Now, y'all could scrape all of this out at the bottom, which is what I've done before. Scoop it all out. Strain it. And let me tell you, you can cook this down with a little bit of sugar, and it makes the best watermelon syrup. But I just thought I'd just share this while that roux is cooking with some of y'all. Because who likes a mess? Plus, like I said, the ones that put up watermelon rind preserves, which I do, everything's right here, then it's so much easier. But I'm going to check on the roux, and when I get it to the color that I wanted to show y'all, I'll, I'll bring you back. Okay, y'all. This is the first stage. Y'all see that color? That's what I would consider a blonde roux. So if you go back and look, once I incorporate it at the start, you'll see how it's changed to stage one. Now this is where you would stop for like light colored sauces. But I thought, you know, why don't I bring them back? And it's been about 10 minutes to get to this. So that's why I said about 30 minutes. It takes 10 minutes on the average for all three stages. So this is the blonde roux. I'll bring you back for the medium. And that way you'll have a little idea of what you're looking for. for. So, I'm going to stir this in a little bit longer. Put it back in the oven. Ten more minutes. We'll see what it does. Okay. This is the caramel color that I was telling y'all about. I'm going to get it kind of stirred in. And I've been trying to time this. And it took 12 minutes to get from the blonde to this caramel color. I'm going to come in with my small whisk to make sure I'm getting the whole bottom. Because see it bends and it can get around all the little corners. I'm telling y'all, anybody that sits and makes roux, y'all know it takes a long time. you got to stir gently, continuously, and on low heat for quite a while. So if you do it like this, it's sitting there handy for you. You're ready to go. All right, now we're gonna go back in. When I come back, it's gonna be the dark roux that I was telling you about. And then we'll jar it up. Right. This is the color that I was going for. And as you can see, 
It's the third stage to the colors that I showed. So I timed it because I told y'all about 30 minutes. But I thought, you know, I want to be as correct as I can. You know, each oven's going to be different. So when we started, we started with a lightly warmed iron skillet, preheat your oven to 400, two cups of oil. I used vegetable this time. I didn't have enough lard. Um, and four cups of all-purpose flour. I put the oil in. When it got just warm enough to where I could do this and lightly feel some heat, that's when I put my flour in, stirred it, put it in a preheated 400 degree oven. But it took 10 minutes to get to the blonde stage. It took 12 minutes to get to the caramel stage. It took 16 minutes to get to this stage that I wanted. Now you can go darker if you choose to, but this to me is a very neutral colored roux that will blend well with, with anything. So this is going to cool off. I'm going to jar it up after it's cool. Oh, see, I touched that and it's hot. But I'm going to jar it up in my mason jar. And if y'all don't have these ball saber lids, I'm going to tell you what. My daughter got these for me. That's been the best thing. Um, and I'm going to put it in the ice box. And as I need roux, I'll go in with a clean spoon, I, you know, the tablespoon, like a soup spoon get the amount that I need, and I'm going to tell you what, it makes everything so much better. So, I'll end the video with a picture of the filled up jar. I hope you enjoyed this video. This goes into Mama's recipe box of treasures. And um, let me know what you think. We're done. But I wanted to show y'all some. If you don't let the roux sit too, too long, just where you can handle it without getting burnt, you know. This is what your skillet looks like. You scrape all that roux out, take you a paper towel, wipe it out, put it back on some heat. Because you got to remember, it started off with oil. So this is greased just like if you cured it again. So that's just what I do. I pull my roux out before, you know, it sticks, just where I can handle it. And I wipe it out, put it back on the stove, wipe it down, and it's ready to go next time. But here you go. It's a little warm. I mean, I can hold it, but it's a little warm. There's the roux. Now, you can see how it's liquefied. It, the, I don't know if you can see it, how it kind of gets liquidy. That's the oil separating, and that's what you want. The roux's gonna settle down, probably about halfway. The rest is gonna be oil. That oil is what's saving that roux, okay? It won't sour. I mean, this'll keep a year in the icebox. So, I mean, I know you can buy jarred roux, at least in the South. But y'all, why sit there and spend 30 minutes making roux for whatever that meal is, when you can just take it Scoop it out the jar, and what you're doing is you're going down, because it's going to get kind of hard, so don't freak out. But you're going to go down, you're going to get a little bit of that roux, which is like a paste. Let that oil come off of that spoon. It'll settle itself back, just like if you've never touched it again. And you want to take that roux into the liquid that's hot, and just stir it in. That's all you're doing. It's, it's almost like masa or flour that you want to try to thicken but you don't like that flour taste i'm telling you try it start off little and you can just keep adding it to the liquid of whatever it is that you're cooking to get it to the taste that you want so like if i was going to do a gumbo for eight people and i had um, four quarts of uh, say chicken broth we're just going to throw that out there i would probably take three heaping tablespoons for that gumbo, because it remember it's chicken broth. I was gonna make say chicken gumbo, because I like that dark roux flavor. Now the ones that don't, just cut back on your roux. But this is so versatile; it can do all kinds of stuff for you. But anyway, there's this week's recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the watermelon trick. Try that, 
And until next time, God bless.